Hey everybody, welcome back to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B and today we are changing the window regulator on this 2003 Volkswagen Beetle convertible. So this is a front window regulator that we are doing on the driver's side. The same uh, procedure will be basically on the passenger side, but uh, if you have a regulator that has failed in the back, this is completely different than the front regulator. So uh, if your back regulator has failed, don't try to use this video to replace it. This is only for the front. So you are gonna need a couple of screwdrivers, Phillips and flathead, some upholstery tools to pop some clips loose, a set of torque sockets, and a set of metric, uh, just regular sockets for disassembly. And if there's anything else that I can think of that we need, I'll let you know along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get this door panel off. So we're gonna go ahead and work this front piece off here. This will, once you pull this off here, you can just use a flathead screwdriver or a bone tool, something like that. You will have two screws behind here. Now be careful when you're pulling this. This is, uh, especially with an older vehicle like this, a 2003, these are very fragile and can crack. So just be very careful with that. Uh, a lot of times these have a Phillips head screw behind them. These have a 10 millimeter uh, hex behind them, uh, just a regular 10 millimeter. So, um, but a lot of times these will have a Phillips head. It just happened to be a little bit of a surprise here with this uh, regular hex head. Yeah, these are not the original bolts that came out of here, but on these older cars, no telling what you'll find. So after this, we have three uh, T, either 20 or 25, I can't remember, I'll have to get down there and look, Torx uh, screws that go at the bottom here, and you'll take those off, and then the, uh, I've already got two of them off here. So this is, yeah, T20. And these are little black screws. Just make sure you don't lose them. So after this, what we're gonna do is, this is this one's pretty loose, so the clips are probably broken on it. This has already been off a couple times, I'm sure, in its life. Uh, but you'll wanna work your upholstery tool underneath here and pop these loose. And then what you're gonna do once you get this popped loose is you're gonna grab this and pull up. This kind of fits into a channel here into a piece of weather strip. And then you're gonna pull this back and start unplugging things behind here. So you have your lock and your mirror. You'll pop your cable loose for your door handle. You'll pop this loose for the uh, alarm system here. may need a screwdriver for some of this stuff. And once you get this unplugged, uh, be very careful, these are fragile. You don't wanna break these. You don't wanna break the plastic tabs on the back or anything, just set this to the side. You also, if you don't want any squeaks or rattles, you need to go ahead and replace some of these broken clips back here. Uh, the customer didn't give me any clips, so I don't have any to go off of, but if that's an important concern of yours, go ahead and get that done now. Okay, so what we wanna do next is we wanna go ahead and take the 10 millimeters that are all the way around here out we also want to go ahead and remove the window uh, motor. Now, when we do that, the glass may fall. So what you can do is you can take you a screwdriver like this, make sure your weather stripping is in there. Uh, I don't really recommend it to do this if you have tinted windows, because this can scratch the tent. But normally what I do is I just put my screwdriver down in between the glass right here and that should hold the glass in. So it'll jam up there and it'll hold the glass where it's supposed to be. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get the 
window motor out of the way. And you can see here what has happened. This cable in the window regulator has come undone and it's just all over the place. We got a piece of it hanging out here. So uh, you can go ahead and unplug this. It's easier to unplug this while it's out of the vehicle than it is bolted up there. Go ahead and get this out of the way. And then we have these 10 millimeters that have to come out here. And we have 10 millimeters, one, two, three, and four right here. And this will hold the internal part of the regulator onto this plate. So we remove this plate to access where the regulator is back here. So once we get that out, this will no longer be a part of this metal plate. And now we gotta get this metal plate out. Now I can tell this door has been into before. These clips are broken. So, uh, you know, if you want to tie that up somehow before you put it back, normally if you just leave it like this and if it just stays in the right position, you put the door panel on, it's not going to be a problem, but uh, you don't want this to, to sag down and get caught in any of the screws. We're going to go ahead and take these bolts off. And the one down here has got a stud going through it, so you're going to need a deep well socket for this one. Now we'll pull this back. You can start seeing where this regulator is bolted up at. So to give you a little bit more access, you can push this through here. And remember, you're just gonna have to pull this back. This is the door cable. You can push this through. And this right here, you can push through. It'll give you a little bit more space, a little bit more movement. You can unplug the speaker here, and that's gonna give you a lot more room. So we have, here's our regulator here, and we have bolts right here. We're gonna hold it in and some on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab, see this regulator is just falling apart here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the new regulator and show you guys how it goes in. And then we'll remove this, we'll put it back in. We'll, we have to unbolt this also from the glass. So we may have to push this down a little bit just so we can access the bolts on these clamps on the glass. Okay, so here is the regulator here. And this, is, this would be looking at it like it was facing you. So this part goes bolts into the door. We have our stud here, we have our stud here, and then we have our two studs, one here and one there. This is how the regulator is going to be bolted into the car. And this is where our motor goes. So I have to flip this over like that, basically just like that. And we have this zip tie here. It's very important the zip tie stays put until we're ready to clamp this motor on because if we don't and this part falls out, it can cause a problem. It can cause this all to unspool and then it's kind of a nightmare. Now. These three uh, holes right here are what uh, bolts to the motor and they have these little clips on them that hold them in. So, you know, technically you could take this out and as long as these hold, you're not gonna have a problem. But if you're jostling it around, I would at least get it bolted up to the car before you zip this off. Uh, and then after that, you know, you can take that off, put the outer skin on, put the door uh, window uh, motor on there and then you're done. Uh, after you clamp the glass. So let's go ahead and get the old one out and the new one in. Okay, so right now with this window all the way up, I cannot access this clamp over here. I can kind of sneak that one out maybe. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to push this down just a little bit to where I can access this clamp right here. So just like that, there's a Looks like a 30 there and a 30 here. We're gonna go ahead and unclamp this glass. Now, I don't use power tools here. Uh, I'm just going to use a regular quarter inch ratchet and a 30 millimeter. OK, 
Okay. We'll keep this bolt, but I think the new regulator comes with one. And you want to make sure you got this glass jam so it doesn't fall. So we're going to go ahead and take these T30s out. This one's a little tough to get to just because it's over here in the corner. You may want to push this down just a little bit. So unlike the hard tops that just have clamps on them, the convertibles have the bolt that goes all the way through. And then so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and try to shake this clamp loose here. There we go. And then we lost our screwdriver here. Let's see if we can get another one here. You can take the glass all the way out if you want. Uh, I don't normally do that. Wish I had a long flat head. All I got is a Phillips head, so we'll just clamp that in there. And see, now that's not going anywhere. Now that I've got this clamped in there on the weather strip, you just don't want to rip the weather strip. You want to be careful. Okay, so now we have four more bolts and we are done with disassembly. We have one bolt through here. Now be careful with this. I, I'm saying bolt, but I mean a nut. This nut down here, if it falls, you may have to get a magnet to get it out. So just when you're taking out, just be really careful because it can fall down in that door frame. And now we have two more down here that we'll have to take apart at the bottom of the regulators. What you can do if this gets in the way, you've got that stud right there, just hang it on that stud out of the way. Ten millimeter nut there. You may have the plastic covers over these. Sorry if I'm in the way. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put this back down. And we can kind of just ball this up. And get this out of the way. Be careful not to scratch your glass, especially if the glass is tinted. Let me just kind of want to make sure you get all the pieces so you don't end up with a rattle later on. Okay, just some quick tips when we're putting this back in. First thing you need to do is you need to lower these clamps, okay, because mine came and the clamp was up here, okay, which got in the way of this bash bar right here. So what I did was I took my hand here and my hand here, I didn't have the camera in my hand, and I pushed all this down about three or four inches. I also went ahead and removed the glass, we'll put it in later, but I just didn't, while I was finagling with this, I didn't want to strike the glass and possibly break it. I've done, with, I've done this without taking the glass out before, but this uh, aftermarket regulator was giving me a little uh, pain in the in the butt because I don't think it's exactly the right uh, the right dimensions as the OEM. <coughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and bolt this up. Now I'm going to put the the bolts exactly where they were, and you have an adjustment. All your adjustment is right here. So this will adjust this way or that way, and this will adjust the angle of the glass coming this way or that way, and that's going to line up in this channel for the top and the A pillar, okay? So you want to make sure if you've got wind noise or anything after this, you can actually adjust this by loosening that 10 millimeter uh, nut down here and the one over there, and you can kind of move this black bar in and out with the door panel and everything on. You don't have to take all this back apart, and you can get this to where it fits just right in there. No wind noise, no water leaks, no squeaks, anything like that. So you may have to play with it a little bit just because this regulator is completely different than the one came out. 
and uh, so there's a factory adjustment there. So we're going to go ahead and get this bolted up and get the skin back on. Uh, before you get the skin back on, you want to go ahead and snip the zip tie. That way uh, we can put the motor on. If you bolt this up to here, you're not going to be able to get that out of the way. So go ahead and snip that. Just be very careful when this doesn't have a zip tie on it. You don't want to pop this white piece loose or these black things right here. You don't want to push them through the holes or this will come, come all uns unspoiled and it will uh, basically make this window regulator faulty. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this back up and then I'm going to give you some tips on how to put everything back together when I get a little bit further. Okay, so we're putting the glass back in. Uh, just quick tips on this. Uh, this one right here, which I've raised up a little bit, uh, you just want to loosen this one. You don't have to take this bolt all the way out. Better, It, it works better if you don't. And you want to make sure that the glass is in between the two metal plates here. There's one in the back and one in the front. And then on this side, you have to take the bolt all the way out. Uh, and it will screw through there. Um, the, the backing plate to this the, that was on the glass actually stuck to the glass. I'm going to use the factory backing plate with this aftermarket one. It should work fine. And so you have this slot here. It's a little bit of adjustment for the back and forth of the window. But for the most part, I get it in there. I wiggle a little bit. I go ahead and tighten it up. And uh, kind of go about my day and I've really never had a problem out of adjustment on these. The, the problem that you have is the adjustment down here at the bottom that controls where the glass sits against the top. So if you have wind noise or anything like that, you're gonna have to adjust that. But normally we don't have to mess with any adjustment in here. If you do have to mess with the, the adjustment in here, there's no real way to do that without taking the uh, everything apart that we already have apart. So we're gonna go ahead and put the bolts in here, go ahead and cut our zip tie. Then we'll get our metal plate on. I'll catch up with you. Okay, so going back with this, make sure that you put this cable back through and put this uh, little weather plug back through. Make sure that's sealed up or you could get some wind noise. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put this uh, basically on this stud down here. And then we're gonna go ahead and start working this up. And then what I want to do is just go ahead and put, make sure nothing gets caught in here. Go ahead and put one bolt in here. Just to temporarily secure this. So now we're going to push this up and go ahead and get it bolted up. This is kind of aggravating. Normally if you get one bolt in, you just want to get them in there finger tight. Again, you can pull this or you can even get some pliers and very carefully pull this forward. Definitely do not want to break off one of those black tabs, so be very gentle if you pull it with pliers like I'm doing. Now we're going to go ahead, after we get these four bolts in, even just finger tight, I'm going to go ahead and put this window regulator motor on. And what that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and secure and sandwich this all together. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. It's easier to plug in with it off this versus on. Go 
ahead and put this on here. And you may have to kind of jiggle the window down and up a little bit. One thing I've noticed a lot of times on these is this window motor will get the cable in here and it'll strip this gear out. Uh, if you have that problem, you may have to replace the window motor, but this one seems like it's got a little bit of wear on it, but it's not too bad. We're gonna go ahead and see if, it, if it'll hunt for us. So, get my ratchet here. Again, when I go back with these, I normally go with hand tools. You may have seen me using the ratchet before, power ratchet. All right, that on there, and we'll get the bottom one on there as well. Once we get that on there, we are missing a bolt right here. I'm gonna see if I can find something to go in that hole because uh, we really do need three bolts on this hole. So let me see if I can, I'm gonna stop the camera and see if I can find something to fit that hole. Okay, so one last thing before we zip this up, I gotta replace some of these bolts because there's so many of them missing from uh, whoever did this last. Go ahead and don't forget to plug your speaker in. I'm gonna go ahead and get these, uh, if you've got any clamps left, make sure that they're on there. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention on disassembly because it really didn't affect this car because it's been done before, is you may have a plastic bracket right here on the other side of that. And basically there's a, a punch out piece of plastic there. You just punch that out and it will separate there. This one has already been separated. Nobody ever puts it back together. So, um, you know, make sure that this plugs in, this plugs in, make sure that everything is plugged up and then I'll meet you on the other side when we put the door panel on. Okay, once you complete this repair, you'll have to do a basic settings of the window that you're repairing. You may have to do the whole car, but for the most time, you'll just have to do one, uh, one window, the, whichever one you repair. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna raise the window up and you're gonna hold the window in the up position for five seconds. And then you're gonna roll it all the way down and hold it down for five seconds. And then you should get your fully auto window working like it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we got one, two, three, four, five. Now we're gonna hold it down. Wait till it stops. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're just gonna click it up. There we go and click it down and we're good. So uh, I wanna show you another problem that I found with this car. This car has a dead door module in it as well. So you have a door latch in here that has a micro switch in it that will tell the car if the door is open or closed. And uh, I did not know this car had this issue, but it's something that we're gonna fix, I guess, next time on this. Uh, the, the door module has to be replaced. So when, the window is up, the door has to tell the car if the door is open or closed because the window, since this doesn't have a sill on here, the window is not going to go up and sit in that sill. The reason why is it's because this door module is not telling the car that the window 
uh, needs to go up because it still thinks the door is closed the whole time. This will also affect your interior light sometimes. And if it's stuck open, it can cause your alarm not to ever arm on the car because it thinks that the door is open. So that's just another thing to look at. Very common on these cars, especially with this being 20 plus years old. Uh, it's, it's actually the other door is doing it as well. So both door latches are dead on this very common problem. Okay, so that does it for this window regulator repair. We still have to go back in and put the door modules in. Uh, that's something that we'll do another day, but we went ahead and got this at least to where not a whole lot of rain is going to get in. You may have a little slit there at the top that may get a little rain or wind noise through that, but for the most part, this car is watertight. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell them that they are going to need two modules to fix this problem on both sides of the vehicle and see what they say. Uh, I hope you like this video. If you learned anything, please consider giving me a like or a subscribe. And of course, sharing this video helps the channel so much. Uh, we've got some new projects coming in. I'm, I'm still working on our Turag back there. I've got the body parts for it. We're going to go ahead and put it back together. And I have another car coming soon. Uh, it's going to get a full build. It is a more of a vintage vehicle than what we have here, but it's going to be very fun for my students and I to pick into and uh, make our own. So, uh, of course, check out for that. And as always, thank you very much for your support. And we'll see you next time on Auto Scholar with Mr. B.